Anita ma'am, 4.40 on the clock. I think it's yeah. safe enough to begin. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Jason. And good evening. And let's come back again to our last session for this event. And uh, let me introduce you to our last speaker. And that is none other than our host. That is Professor Jason Johns. Okay. Who's going to speak to you about education and culture in a COVID and post-COVID scenario. Talking about Jason. Well, Professor Jason was, uh, I can, you can say that a first rank holder for BA, a second rank holder for MA in Asian culture. He is an alumni of St. Xavier's College. And of course, he has pursued his PhD, he submitted it also. But at the same time, he has achieved a lot. One cannot imagine his interest. He's presently a visiting faculty at Jaihin College for BWOC also. Yeah. Am I right or wrong? Jason, are you? Jason is very shy over here. But let me speak about it. He has got several diplomas. One is a museum and conservation in mysticism. Am I right, Jason? And he is pursued in Egypt. He is uh, doing courses in Harvard also as well. And he's he's got a lot of certificates with him. Okay, and constant. It's fun to listen to him because every day he has something new. And believe it or not. He has presented papers at international and national level in Sri Lanka. It is fun exploring with Jason also. I had that opportunity uh, to take him along with me and go with him as well. And uh, currently, actually, he is more interested in the development of Christianity in India. But at the same time, he likes to pursue many other things as well. He has been a co-editor of our Richa magazine. He has worked as a, for Vivida. He was, as a student also, he was a very, very active person. So when you look at all these, he's a, you can say, very versatile person. Am I right, Jason? It, it's fun to see it around there. He's blushing over there. I don't mind him letting him blush a little bit in public because uh, it's a rare opportunity you get, but still it's worth it. I think uh, hats off to you, Jason, for being a very good organizer. And uh, let us not waste our time over here on because people are more interested in understanding you. And I should know from you, what is education and culture in COVID and post-COVID? How will you handle this scenario? Because it is your generation who's going to take forth. We are going to, you can say, lag behind. So what are you going to do and how are you going to be prepared for it? So with this, I leave it in the hands of Jason. Jason, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anita, ma'am. Can everyone hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Yes. Uh, uh, what we'll do is... Uh, uh, my topic for today, my screen is visible if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. Perfect. Yes. Uh, my topic for today is education and culture in a COVID and post-COVID scenario. So the lecture sketch is as such, we'll, I'll be talking about how education was in the pre-COVID scenario. What are the effects of this pandemic on education and culture studies? I did a small little survey, so that will be a bit serious and I'll share the findings with you all. I'll talk about the current efforts taken by education organizations as well as private individuals in the realm of education and culture. There are a good amount of opportunities as well as challenges that face uh, us educators, us heritage manage managers and the general public as l at large. Okay, so I'll be addressing a few of them in my talk. Now, this talk is going to be a very interactive one. So you all will have to keep your eye on the screen as well as on the chat box, because I would like to see if the audience is with me, which I do believe that y'all are with me. Okay. So uh, education in the pre COVID scenario, if you uh, connect to any of these pictures, you have to type a yes in the chat box. Okay. First uh, lectures on site. Yes. Lectures in a uh, hall lectures outdoors, flip classroom, wherein a student presents the education or the material to the teachers, a industrial visit, say to a conservation lab, a heritage visit or a heritage site walk, wherein you go with the facilitator and you look around the place and you observe uh, the culture and the uh, tangible heritage. A performing arts lecture, wherein the performing artist or the teacher performs for you and you absorb. Yes, uh, a interactive tactile lecture wherein students from all across, whether they are uh, able-bodied or even disabled, can participate due to the tactile experience, say like a clay modeling workshop. Yes, 
perfect. So we'll go ahead. Now, the effects of COVID-19 on culture and education. What has this pandemic done? This pandemic has caused a great amount of losses. Losses in life, losses in opportunity, losses in economy, etc. The sites that we usually occupy lie abandoned mostly. These are visuals from the last month and last few days. All of these sites, which would be active heritage sites, active sites of learning, are now silent. The museums are now guarded by the very, very sculptures that guarded the ancient site because there are no public in them. Museums and galleries are closed. Sites, which are heritage monuments, are now depopulated. Religious sites have very few worshippers. Sites of cultural learning, which would be flocked by many people, are now abandoned or with a very few amount of people. Heritage monuments are being sanitized. Temples are without worship. Deities are without offerings. Cultural performances or cultural rituals, which would bring together a large amount of people last year, are now become smaller. Museums and other institutions have been transformed into places which can be used for other purposes besides passing on cultural information. But what about schools and what about colleges? Our corridors are silent. Our classrooms are empty. But there is a transformation. Now, if you connect to any one of the following images which will be coming up, I want you all to type a yes. Let's look at the fun part of this transformation of education that we are seeing today. Earlier, we used to get up for an 8 o'clock lecture. Now, we are not even getting up by around 11 o'clock. Yes? Online classes start at around 10 o'clock and we get up at 9.59, mute our audio, mute our video, and we are there for the lecture. We don't have to travel. We don't have to go anywhere. Usually, when we are the first person to enter the chat for a Zoom session, we have these awkward silences between the moderator or the host and the public. We take screenshots of these wonderful, wonderful lectures and never look at them again. Time has flown. It was just yesterday that the TY batch was about to give their exam. And now we are sitting in June. I think it's the 10th of June. No, it's the... Okay, I've forgotten the date. It's I've forgotten the date. It's a, six. Okay, it's a six. It's six. And then the Wi-Fi problem. You see that either it was me or it was Jadav sir, it was Anita ma'am. There was a two second lag and it looks as though either one of us is possessed. Okay. And then our mental state. Our mental state is so bad that we don't know what the hell is happening. Okay. And teachers, educators, principals, education ministers are trying to hold this act together somehow. And there are a few students who are trying to also hold this information dissemination on the WhatsApp groups, on online classes, somehow together. Another serious part. I did a small little survey just a few days back among students who have passed their 10th standard and who are among the doctoral phase. Okay. And I asked them a very serious question. Are you studying from the comforts of your home? Does comfort and home apply to you? First of all, uh, a good amount of them said yes, but there are people who have said no. Comforts mean, am I in a good home? Do I have the amenities? Is the environment in my home conducive for learning? Do I have electricity? Do I have a computer? Also, does the concept of home apply to you? Whether students are at home or not. Like, for example, we have our very students from Xavier's College, which the college is keeping a track of. There are some of them who reached home just a few days back. So whether the concept of home applies to them. Talking about migrants, are they at home? When we come to uh, online education, I asked them whether their colleges have started online education. And I got a response that a majority of colleges have not. Few of us like us and uh, institutes like NIFT, etc. have already begun with online education. 
then i asked the question does uh, social factors or economic factors like age family gender sexuality uh, social status economic status affect your learning a good amount of people said yes a classic example i was uh, talking to my friend's friend on phone the other day and i said you can join this particular webinar or another talk online uh, the quick response that she gave oh my uh, brother is using the laptop i don't think i'll be able to use it for a day or two so you can see the gender disparity in access to uh, infrastructure or mobility i did a survey on the infrastructure or access to uh, devices so i asked people if they had a computer laptop smartphone etc and you can see out of 33 participants 32 said yes high speed internet connection around 20 said yes and power supply around 25 said yes so you can see that uh, if basic amenities like these are not available it hampers uh, culture as well as education being disseminated in this particular time of covid as well as regular scenario so in a covid or post covid world we know that we have to work on all of these now many of you all had this problem that you all were trying to upload the screenshot for the google form on your phone correct and then we had to help you all and put it on uh the google form via our laptops so you can see the amount if you all can face this for a small little webinar imagine for regular classes what is the situation and there are a good amount of people who this survey has not obviously reached on to because they do not have mobile devices you can imagine whether education is reaching them or not okay now uh, we are looking at the current scenario uh, of uh, the efforts taken by education cultural organizations these include uh, efforts by museums and other organizations efforts by teachers efforts by uh, individuals as well as online learning platforms now museums have taken to social media very very prominently this is a picture of uh, mr anupam sah chief conservator of the chhatrapati shivaji maharaj vastu sangrahalay this was put on their facebook handle immediately when the lockdown began so when people are sitting at home uh the museum conservators who do live in the museum campus are providing uh conservation uh work or their expertise on to the objects which are present in the museum our heroes who are present that is the uh security staff who stay on campus are protecting the museum like the csmvs as we see so they are also part of the heroes of this particular uh scenario of covid wherein they are helping in heritage management uh this is the csmvs staff where they did a instagram challenge and they put it on instagram and facebook to show their solidarity with the public uh we have one of our uh, students who is part of a uh, performing arts institute and she has been doing these small little videos okay wherein she is demonstrating basic uh, elements basic postures of performing arts on instagram so what are we doing we are trying to reach out to the public via social media because for around 16 to 18 hours we know that the younger generation is on their mobile or on the computer going ahead on the left side you can see our regular classroom this is our ty classroom uh, just before the pandemic occurred and you can see on the right our online classroom zoom so we are doing our classrooms likewise uh, many private individuals have gone ahead and are trying to make education learning etc accessible to people like for example the one on the left is an instagram poster of a stationery shop personal wherein uh you can get to see that the various stationery shop options or the facilities that are available for home delivery uh to school children many stationery shops are closed up till now the webcam that you are seeing me on i got it around one and a half month after the lockdown so accessing uh basic amenities is definitely a problem and private individuals are coming forth to help the process of learning uh many of us have skills like for example my friend vaishak has come up with a beautiful concept of an online or zoom workshop of art from home wherein he and his friends or collaborators are coming up with these workshop uh at a small price but they are giving out their skills to the general public so it is not just formal education it is informal education of the arts and uh other areas which we are trying to give to the public uh online learning platforms like edx and coursera are present these platforms if they offer their services for free are known as mooc massive open online learning mooc platforms 
MOOC platforms usually do not charge a fare, but if they are charging a fare, they are massive open. Uh, sorry, they are massive online platforms, but not open. Uh, edX is one such platform, and it allows any of the users to access any course. So supposing if I, a person from the arts background, want to uh, do a course in alternative intelligence to cybersecurity, I can definitely do that. This would not be possible in a formal setup like a college because of subject combinations or our background or the subject that we take in our BA or in our uh, HSC. Now, these uh, the edX has done one very beautiful thing that during this lockdown, it offers its courses for free that means is information dissemination free of charge but in case if you want a certificate you'll have to pay the amount in a certain amount of dollars but uh, information is readily available a second uh, platform is coursera our college that is sensevis college mumbai has partnered with coursera and a majority of the courses are being offered for free hence it becomes a massive open online course type of platform and you get a certificate for it. So this is how uh, educational institutions, museums can team up with Coursera, offer their skills on these platforms for the general public during this time of COVID. Now, there are a good amount of opportunities that cultural organizations have in this pandemic as well as the post-pandemic scenario. Outlining few of them. The use of mobility and social media. A good amount of us are using mobile phones or smartphones and are able to access this. Now, how do we use this to our best and promote information dissemination? The best way is social media. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat. Uh, all of these are available. WhatsApp are available for us to spread information. So many of the museums like uh, the Udaipur City Palace Museum, as we seen yesterday, CSMVS, uh, the Metropolitan Museum, British Museum, all of them are online. They're putting their content online for viewers to sit at home and receive the content. Use of alternative intelligence and cybersecurity. Now, I want to ask the audience over here who operates Instagrams. Have you all done shout outs? Yes, yes. You all must have done shout outs for your friends, wherein you portray uh, or you do a story of your friend. And when you do a story for your friend, what are you doing? You're breaking something called as an algorithm. Uh, computers do one very, very important thing which they can do best. That is calculations. We, because we are the creators of computers, can override it. How do we override this calculation? Computers can pick up information. Information on text. Hence, we use hashtags. The more amount of hashtags we use, the more amount of visibility that we get to the general public. So supposing if a city palace museum, Udaipur, is using a hashtag museum week or museums from home, uh, CSMVS is using a hashtag museums from home or seven hashtags, etc. What you are doing is when someone searches for museums from home, or a hashtag like a museum, you get more than 500 to 600 uh, sort of searches in your Instagram feed, okay? Thus putting your museum, thus putting your college, thus putting your educational uh, information right on top for viewers. You get more visibility by this. Also, a very important thing to note is cybersecurity. We are viewing this particular session on Zoom. There was a advisory by the MHA uh, that Zoom is unsafe, but they put a second advisory that we have to take certain precautions. Information di dissemination is very, very vital, but security for our platforms, our websites, our uh, social media platforms is very important to save ourselves and to protect the data that we have. It can also include the following. Like, for example, when we told you that uh, you can pay through NEFT, okay? And we share the information publicly and we are trying to control the number of people who are attending this uh, particular seminar. We are trying to be very, very careful with the fact that our session does not get hacked. We are also trying to see that the account does not get hacked. Hack. So that is part of cybersecurity when we are talking about uh, spreading education or spreading culture via social media platforms. Digital repositories for offline storage. Now we know that many people are facing internet shortages, internet uh, power shortages or uh, power outs. Okay, during this time of COVID, many of you are dropping in and off for sessions. Now, how do we save it for you? 
we can do some things like uh, keep a video recording of our session preserved for later. We can keep a text preserved for later. Many uh, museums, many libraries are giving out their content for free for this limited period of time. I'll be talking about that. Resource and capacity building programs. Now, many of us uh, teachers, at least we know of this, that uh, I think Anita ma'am, you attended the session in the morning. Yes, yes. Uh, I... yes. So many of us teachers encouraged by our principals are told to use this particular time of May and June to prepare for our sessions. We are not just smiling our time away. We are definitely preparing uh, to meet the challenges of online education. We are doing something as FDP or faculty development program, wherein we are learning how to use Zoom, PowerPoint, etc, etc. Uh, education is not education for all if it is not diverse, inclusive and intersectional. That is, we are reaching everyone despite their uh, handicaps or disabilities uh, and also bring forth using our privilege to pull these people who have been excluded into the fold. A good system is the buddy system. Now, likewise, uh, if I told you that we have a tech team, three people standing by for us, uh, this can be applied for educational institutes, for museums or cultural organizations the same way. We told you one thing, if you are not able to sign up, uh, our tech team will get back to you. That is the same way that it works in education as well as cultural sector. So in case if you require a buddy, a mentor to bring the information to you, to share it to you, uh, the buddy can help you definitely. Uh, this is the social media outreach by various museums. Like, for example, the uh, CSMVS did this crossword puzzle and put it on their Facebook and their Instagram profile. And it asks them to identify the various weapons that you all can see. Now, what the CSMVS is practically doing, the arms and armament gallery is located on the upper floor. Usually, a good amount of people do not go to the arms and armament sections. By doing this challenge on Instagram or Facebook, what you're doing is you're, uh, you know, orienting people to the fact that there is an arms and armaments gallery somewhere in the CSMVS. So if they visit the CSMVS post lockdown, they will definitely go uh, to the arms and armaments gallery. Uh, the Bauda Gilad Museum did this very, very informative as well as entertaining uh, shoot of their terracotta uh, models that they have on the upper floor. Again, they used culture and education together, wherein they use social distancing uh, measures and they put it with the uh, artifacts that they have. So greet people with a wave or namaste, avoid handshakes, uh, do not touch your face, nose, mouth. Uh, avoid gatherings and maintain social distancing of around one meter in distance. You can see what they're doing. They're orienting you to uh, social distancing measures. They are also quietly, very subtly orienting you to education. That is museum educations. Uh, this is the same pattern that educational institutes and many museums, many organizations can use to touch the various sections of society which are using mobility as a device. Uh, Museum Wallas on Instagram and Facebook is another private platform and they're doing this thing wherein you can recreate a South Asian or an Indian art piece in the lockdown period. So we have our ex-student over here, Jabin, who has tried to replicate the uh, bearded man of the Indus Valley civilization. So when you put out these challenges on social media, what you're doing is you're telling people, oh, there's a challenge. You're giving them that stimulus. Okay. And they want to be featured. They want to increase their followers. Yes. Okay. Now, if you want to get an artwork or an art piece of uh, India or the South Asian uh, region, what will an ordinary person have to do? The ordinary person will have to go on their mobile or their computer and search for something like Indian art. If they're searching for something like Indian art, they are by default reading some information. So literally you're putting history, education, culture straight down the throats of the people very, very successfully. And you're, it's a win-win uh, situation for both. The platform gets its visibility and you yourself get visibility and you're learning in the bargain. Now, this is the British Museum on Twitter. And what they did is that they put this uh, hashtag museum from home. Many museums are using this hashtag. So when you uh, check this hashtag on Google or on Instagram or on Twitter, you get all of these searches and you can see that the British Museum and many other museums have put their entire or almost a good amount of their collection 
online for people. You are sitting at home or sitting at a place in a different section of the world and you're accessing a good amount of historical or cultural information from your home or from your device. Uh, Webinars like these also bring forth, like for example, Priyanka. Priyanka is joining us at around 3 a.m. from California. So place, time, etc. is not a matter of, matter of concern if it is out there on the digital medium. Uh, usually teachers like us, we have these beautiful replicas. And what I did is that I put these small little photographs of replicas along with a GIF and a short bit of information. Uh, on my Facebook and Instagram stories. And what uh, you, happened is that people are getting these small bits of information and they are looking at it. And you know what happens is people will start looking around in their home and see if there is something similar. They will understand the cultural and historical significance if they have. Like for example, Jadav sir showed us the coins. Many of us duly have these coins at home. Uh, Many e-books and e-repositories or e-libraries have opened their repositories free of charge. Now, these include Cambridge University Press, Gale, Oxford University, and all of these are present at the link that you all can see below on the slide. And these are free of charge specifically for the pandemic scenario. Major textbook, major journals, which cost a bomb in the Indian context of around $100, $200 or pounds is now free of charge. What they're doing is they're spreading this information to teachers and educators. And we as a mediary can spread it to our students or participants as well as the general public. I'll let this slide linger around for three seconds. If you need, you can take a screenshot of this. But you can see that this is not only uh, dealing with the arts, but is also with various subjects, which include sciences, chemistry, geology, communication, etc. All of their publications, or at least a section, are available free of charge. Uh, we did this uh, program called as a faculty development program, and this is by Karan Shah's institute called as IIDE, Indian Institute of Digital Education. This platform gives digital marketing training for students, but has also been doing this for us teachers and educators. And if you look down on the bottom of the slide, you can see what we did. We did uh, an introduction to e-learning, how to make PPTs, how to use a learning management system, how to use online platforms like this. So that is why what we used to do is we are coming at 2.30, letting in participants in, uh, trying to adjust our volume, trying to adjust our video, doing all of these sound checks. All of this was taught to us by these type of institutes and they are doing a good uh, job in this and colleges or educational institutes as well as cultural institutes should take the advice of institutes like IIDE so that they develop their faculties and information dissemination becomes an easier process. Uh, we know that there has been a lot of fund cuts. Uh, even Priyanka announced that the funding is a problem for journalism. And you can see that the Tate uh, Gallery, one of the four galleries that are present in London, uh, has been offering a £10,000 to 10 artists, uh, specifically during this time of pandemic. Now you can see what they're doing. They're giving an opportunity and funding to an artist. An artist is producing art. Art is part of culture and thus it's part of education. You can see funding is very, very intrinsically tied with the process of education as well as the process of cultural dissemination. Uh, this is Dan Wo. Dan Wo works with the VNA as well as uh, other institutes as a curator. And June being Pride Month, and we trying to being uh, see education can't be education if it is not intersectional as well as inclusive to all. June month is Pride Month dedicated to the LGBTQI community, and you can see a curator of the VNA Museum uh, going ahead and doing online Zoom sessions and bringing out various. Uh, objects of the museum or of the collections, like whether it may be a Freddie Mercury, uh, an LGBTQI icon, or a Avilokiteshwara wherein he transformed from a male deity to a female deity. The gender binary was broken in the fourth to third, fourth century AD is being bought out by these. So people who have been systematically excluded uh, have been bought and 
uh, they are trying to show that yes, you are a part of the museum, you are there as objects, and now you can join us as persons. Uh, the challenges that education and cultural education has, uh, that cultural and edu uh, education institutions have in this pandemic and post pandemic scenario are listed over here. The first I should have put is lack of basic resources. These include infrastructural resources to the education and cultural organizations and among students, visitors and the general population. We'll also be looking at mental health concerns and also talking about the concept of education for all. Now, the problem occurs, a good question to ask, if there is a small little site museum like a Sangol site museum or a Lothal site museum, which is manned by say five to seven people and all of the seven people are at home, uh, who takes care of the artifacts? Who takes care of the site? Who spreads information? Are they systematically becoming invisible at this point of time? Because they are not online on platforms like uh, Instagram, on Facebook, etc. So lack of infrastructure usually makes institutions, makes organizations invisible. It is the duty of us who are privileged to bring them on the map, say post a picture of Lothal and bring it on the map on social media, thus generating interest. Museums are fearing, schools are fearing that they may, may not open so soon or they may, may not open in the near future or, or ever at all. What we can do is try to bring them on the digital platform. Infrastructure among students, visitors, and general public. How many of our students have a laptop or a mobile phone or both? How many have access to this? How many have access to 24 hours by seven uh, electricity and good network? Big question mark. How many have, besides the secondary, that is mobiles, laptops, how many have food, clothing, shelter? How many have the home? If we are saying that we have to uh, learn from the comforts of our home. How many of them are in a mental state to absorb information, to understand the information and to bring it out in the uh, concept of an examination? If it's not education, it's not education of all. I'll be talking about it in the slide. Now, the uh, when we come to challenges, there are positive uh, examples that I wish to share. The Help the Blind Foundation in Chennai has been bringing forth a infrastructural and training uh, program for the visually challenged students where they are uh, doing a skill building for students who are about to take on an employment opportunity, which is something very, very good. People who have been systematically excluded from uh, the systems and are slowly being integrated via these foundations. We have the XRCVC, that is Xavier's Resource Center for the Visually Challenged, which did a capacity building program for the students who are visually challenged. They're training them to use Google Meet or Zoom, which is basically the platform that many educators and including this webinar is using. So we have to use people who uh, use um, platforms like these to bring forth those who uh, do not have the privilege via their uh, disabilities or their incapacitations. Uh, Rahat Sangvi is uh, a person who I have uh, attended sessions for as well as know her and she has been conducting these online sessions as well as putting out things on her Instagram profile and what she's doing is uh, that she's giving therapy info. She's a therapist by profession and one post which hit me very very strongly is tips to navigate through online therapy. Mental health concerns is a very important concern. How well are we equipped for the scenario? Are we panicking? What is our mental state? Can we study or is it too much of information overload. Many of us uh, do go to therapy and some of us will not be able to access therapy because of the social distancing measures. Now, many therapists are going online based on their boundaries, etc. So, Rath is giving us tips of how to navigate online therapy sessions very, very comfortably. So, and she's also doing a session with Xavier's. Maybe I can share the uh, link with you all on chat or on the group later on. So, yes, um, we have to prepare ourselves mentally. We have to become mentally resilient in this time. And yes, therapy and mental health uh, professionals are doing their best in this realm. And we can definitely take this opportunity, uh, whether we are an educator, whether we are a student or just a normal person.
uh, education is not education if it is not for all. Currently, we are on the upper left uh, scenario where it is unequal. Many people do not have access to electricity, devices, home, food, shelter, etc. And some people are duly having more of this. We are trying to, uh, okay, if you try to create something like an equality, wherein we give a mobile phone to a visually challenged student. But how well will a visually challenged student be uh, capable enough to use the mo normal, ordinary mobile phone for their studies? We try to make it equitable. Maybe give an added software for the visually challenged. But we should aim for an equitable society, equitable education and a justice-based education wherein education becomes education for all. It requires a good amount of infrastructural changes which the government, schools, colleges, organizations have to think about. It requires a good amount of resource uh, mobilization to bring everyone on platforms. It requires a information dissemination on various platforms to various people and make the system fair so that everyone well, irrespective of gender, sexuality, race, caste, class, etc., is able to get a glimpse of education, get a glimpse of their culture, and definitely be on the same page that we are on. So definitely we can sit at home and save the world, or we can use physical distancing and do something positive. Many of us have the privilege, we know a certain skill. We are using our smartphones, we are using the digital medium. Can we use our privilege to reach out to the masses? Yes, we can. We can put out our small skills, like maybe like a recipe, maybe like calligraphy. We can do it via online mediums and spread small sorts of information, whether it is cultural education, uh, whether it is skills on online platforms to help those who are not so very uh, blessed in this scenario so that they can be on the same level at us. So thank you very much. Dur se hi namaste. My contact info is there below. And thank you very, very much for this opportunity. Are thank you, Jason. Questions? Yes, thank you, Jason. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So Jason, I think I never told them something. I don't mind telling them now because he spoke such a lot about museums. Let me tell you all, Jason is the current secretary of the Museum Society of Mumbai. So now you all know that it is he who you can say loves doing outreach activities for the Museum Society. And that's what he's trying to show you all, reach out to you all. Okay, and uh, one thing Jason, while you were talking, uh, trace me back a year ago, when I was walking through the, you can say, streets of Cambodia near the Bayon Temple and Tapro. And I don't know what, I had the mobile with me and suddenly WhatsApp live, I took them all and I showed the entire class the beyond temple and I spoke about the top Rome temple. I said, come on, see it. I never knew that one year later, I'm going to get involved in this virtual online education. I wish I knew Zoom at that time. I didn't know Zoom at that time. So this is a change which has occurred in us and you are trying to show this change to us. And this is the new generation. So you have kept them active because you saw I had only one question. Can you tell the various online courses and digital, te digital technology? I'll put it, I'll put it on your group. I'll put no, it on the group. Yeah, More than that, you made them, you kept them awake by saying, answer yes, 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 yes. So you see, constantly they were giving you a response. And they realized that each one of us today has to change. And you are the one who have marked the change. Well, we showed the past. This has to be done. This has to be done. This is there. All this is there. But you have to show what exactly is happening now and what we have to go march ahead, whether it's our old generation or whether it's a new generation. So I think all of you all here can understand. If you all have any questions, you can ask. There's a question over here. Indian education system largely focused on studies and marks and not on the importance of physical activities. And now they're restricted due to pandemic. Do you agree that this is a major setback as children usually look for everywhere to avoid studying, every way to avoid studying? Shouldn't uh, we like, yeah, you can answer that question. Uh, the education system in India is uh, quite 
back a few steps from uh, foreign education systems this is because of infrastructure and various other uh, hurdles which are there now if we want to reach a section like a oxford or if we want to reach a level like a harvard we will have to use digital platforms wherein we can use online education which are not not like for example a uh, harvard Uh, did, I'm doing a course from Oxford University, and the assignments are to be submitted, and we get a grade. Now we get a grade, and we get a certificate for this. Same thing could have been applied for this, and the problem is that we cannot trust the online system. Many of us are not on mobile or on computer, and how do we give an exam? How do we do an assignment? So, like uh, when we had these uh, degree programs over here, we are running certificate courses, we are running a diploma program, and many of the students asked me for an extension. I teach at NIFT as well, and the students asked me for an extension to their this thing because the storm had uh, crashed the power line, so the student was not able to do their assignment. So, how do we make this manageable? Another question which is asked uh, by teachers is, uh, if we give an online exam, the students will copy. of course they will copy because our systems are not ready for something called as online proctoring which is the use of artificial intelligence via the webcam now what the webcam will do uh, and it will take control of your device when you are giving an exam it's called as online proctoring it is a bit expensive but we have to assume that every student will have a webcam and a computer together and if you if a student tries to meddle that is try to switch switch the uh, tab uh, tries to open a book or shifts here and there or even if the student is not the student someone else the alternative intelligence platform will catch you definitely catch you and you will be debarred from that exam but how very practical it is for a country like india is very very problematic so definitely it includes government and various non government organizations to put in their thoughts and funding so that everyone gets to come on board and take education to the future oh uh, well tanmay asked on the ancient indian schools much better well tanmay when you look at it uh, we have to march ahead we can't just go back behind yes it was a very good system in fact uh, face to face teaching is very effective but at the same time now we have to change as time changes don't you feel it over here jason definitely we are see the ancient system is yet prevalent your guru shishya parampara is definitely happening over here and we are trying to keep ourselves very interactive that's why i was trying to use the yes yes methodology to see whether everyone is awake uh, thank you very much Uh, and uh, there are also uh, arjuna mishra says yes there are courses in coursera and visual engagement as well so i think they have to all set out and look out for all these sources you have to now march out of your cubicle soon i think the lockdown will be over very soon it is i think they have opened the few shops from yesterday so you all can actually march around and see things so i think uh, let me conclude the whole thing over here for you all that uh, this process of neo musealization which is started by museums and the archaeological survey of india is definitely going to help in our cultural revivalism so if traditional museums are catering to the needs of the citizens in towns and cities in the various states the archaeology department now is catering now to subaltern sectors through events like awareness programs promotion of their arts and crafts training tourist guides and trekkers for forts and caves and this can increase our revenue and promote the development of a tourist plan in the near future now remember covid 19 has created a lockdown in every field but it has made an individual think think of a better way to face and recover from this situation with innovative ideas create new methods of disaster planning adoptions of new technology and digital platforms have open new avenues for museums and archaeology department for teachers for citizens for you all and that is going to make a healthier and a bright future for our country and with this note i would like to thank everybody over here first and for our chief advisors dr rajendra shinde the principal of st zavis college dr firoza godre the chairperson museum society of bombay mumbai we call it as now dr rajendra yadav superintending archaeologists archaeological survey of india mumbai circle i thank first of all our organizing committee i thank ami parit vibhudangi vibhuti dangi tanmay tiwari i thank dr karuna gokarna i thank dr radha kumar i thank our co-convener mr jason jones 
And I thank our list of speakers over here, Dr. Rajendra Yadav, uh, Ms. Chelsea Santos. I thank over here, Dr. Shrikan Jadav. I thank Ms. Priyanka Suryanini, who has kept herself uh, overnight awake. And I thank all of you all for attending this conference over here. I hope you all enjoyed. What we'll do now is we will put up the link for your global form. Please fill it up and you will get your certificate within, you can say, 72 hours or so. So, uh, yeah. once again, yes, Jason, you have anything to say? Uh, participants, kind attention. We have put the feedback link in the chat box. You can just click on the feedback link fill the form and within 72 hours, you should get your certificate. Uh, also, I would request the speakers to come online and for a photo, a photo, please. All the speakers and the guests, would you please come online for a photo? Okay, uh, it's in gallery view. Tech team, is it in gallery view? Okay, uh, Ammi and Tanmay, could you go ahead with the photo? I think. Yes. Yeah. Done? Done? Ami, is it done? Done. Done. Okay, perfect. So, thank you. Thank you so much. This session has been wonderful. We have a few uh, last announcements to make. We are having more interactive sessions, a session which begins tomorrow. It's our research methodology. Uh, we'll de definitely love to have most of the participants with us. Do stay tuned to our uh, emails and our announcements. And thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to be with you all. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, participants, if you all are with us, the feedback link is also on your WhatsApp group. So kindly fill it up from there. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Priyanka. Priyanka, I think, has is she on session? I think she's left. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, 3 a.m. 3 a.m. in the morning. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, all of the speakers. Uh, Jadav sir, Chelsea, thank you. Thank you so much for these interactive lectures. And uh, tech team, you all did a wonderful job. Thank you, technical team. Thank you, Ami, over there. Congratulations, Dr. Anita, Jason, and Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations, Chelsea. Thank you, ma'am. Check the recording. Yeah, I'm just checking the recording. Um, Please save the chat as well. Okay. Uh, participants, there's a small little issue with the form on uh, Dr. Shrikant's question. Uh, we'll uh, we'll take that as a yes for all. So I know you'll you'll have loved the session. Just put the uh, select any one of the answers. We'll consider it as a positive reply. Thank you. Uh, I'll try to ask Priyanka for her email address and she'll put it on chat or as a, a WhatsApp message. Yes, yes. Uh, Sanjana, you can just choose one of the answers which apply and uh, we'll consider it as full positive reply for it. Thank you.
Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I'll check the recording. Uh, I think we are done for the time being. What we'll do is I'll stop the recording, which will automatically save it onto the chat. Correct? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm stopping recording. Do you want to stay as you'll review? Okay. <laughs>